Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, boy, I have been in a whirlwind of meetings today, uh, including uh, with, I don't know, maybe half hour, hour long. I forget exactly how long we talked. Talked to uh, Steve Quayle uh, earlier today. And uh, he was kind enough to send me uh, uh, also an email. Uh, I blocked out Steve's first part of his email because I don't know. I wanted you to be able to know it actually come from Steve Quayle, though. But uh, I don't know if Steve Quayle's email is just readily publicly available, at least the one he sent it to me on. So I, so I apologize uh, for that, uh, but I just for protecting his own privacy as well. Uh, but anyway, Steve was sending me some of the information that he had uh, he had received that he had shared on the Hal Turner show. And Steve uh, clearly in our conversation today said we are at war with China. That's not we're not talking about a Cold War. We are actually at war. And what caught my attention uh, in Steve's uh, dissertation that he was uh, sharing there on how on the Hal Turner show was a bunker buster being used in Maine and being wrote off as uh, just an earthquake uh, seismic activity where we killed, according to the estimate that they had on there, when as Steve did say he didn't know exactly how many people were killed, but some estimated were 50, 000, or f roughly 50,000 Chinese soldiers in an underground secret bunker there, allegedly, from what I understand, owned by Joe Biden, or at least he's connected to this in some way, uh, killing these Chinese soldiers. Let me read to you some of the things that are written here on the screen, as you can see them already yourself. Uh, he says, three training missions were a raving success, except for the paperwork yet to finish, which explains how live bombs got loaded on the bombers for a training mission. A minor cleanup detail. All targets, 100% bullseye nailed everything pilots and crew awarded for precision strikes on the training missions. Uh, all Canadians and USA and Mexico Chinese base obliterated the start to finish one hour, 45 minutes from first strike. Canadian military woke up super duper fast as the bombs were falling and they saw nothing until the kaboom underground. As a group of the top brass told Trudeau that he screwed up may be big time and may need to exit fast or die or fess up, but the military was not going to cover up for him. One more detail, the B-52 and the, and the B-2 bomber crews only knew it was a precision strike, both in time and accuracy. They did not know the bombs were live bombs. That's, that's happened actually before, too. Uh, things that we've, I've been privy to as well on that. But more than more details, excuse me, uh, the Russian who took over the Chinese compound of the Chinatown general tied him up and left before the bombs fell for the reason at that moment Russia and the USA have no big beef with each other. Uh, this is what I know so far as of this moment, other than Biden lost all his Chinese dough and uh, she lost about uh, 200 B USB cash, 200 billion US uh, D cash used to build the bases. We've been hearing a flurry of information that's going on regarding these things, and I really appreciate Steve Quell bringing out what he did. Um, but of course, I also took and wanted to find out was there, you know, especially in the case of the. Chinese soldiers in an underground bunker in Maine and us actually bombing that. Was there, is there some credibility to this information? Uh, so I did have a private meeting today uh, in regards to a lot of different questions I had. I actually spent two hours in that briefing and uh, found out that it was true. We actually did use a bunker buster which is a nuclear war tip drives into the ground uh, on uh, on a secret base that killed that many Chinese. Now, those of you that already know, we'd already been speaking a little bit about the situation that's going on. Uh, I'd shared with you from different intel sources, and I'm, I'm pulling this from an array of sources here because I've actually been in meetings now for the last uh, several days. Still have more to go. And uh, I knew that the Chinese had been working since the mid-90s with the Colombian cartel as well as the Mexican cartel, these different groups down there. And as I had shared with you that 
the information that was given to me is that the Chinese back in the mid 90s, uh, they approached the cartel in order to get dirt on American politicians. Uh, dirt on American politicians that they could blackmail them with because they knew that they were getting a lot of kickbacks, financial kickbacks for covering up the drug trafficking that the CIA had uh, covertly had orchestrated in order to be able to raise money to do the overthrowing all of the, for different purposes of overthrowing other nations to pay armed uh, groups. Uh, like in the case of the Contras, the, um, the weapons for Iran, of course, that was based too because we had hostages in Iran and we were doing this in exchange and uh, like a little payout type thing. But at the same time, we were still taking and buying AKs and things like that, supplying them to the Contras and many other types of devices uh, that were being done. And all this was being done through the uh, Med Medin uh, drug cartel uh, and pumping these drugs into the United States. And of course, many, many politicians got involved in that. You got your Bush family, the Clintons. Uh, oh, yeah. And don't forget, we do have uh, the former vice president for Bill Clinton as well uh, that was involved in these things. And uh, excuse me, not, not <laughs> I get it mixed up here just a minute there. Uh, you got Joe Biden, uh, which interestingly enough, uh, there seems to be a connection to him in this base where these Chinese were in this underground bunker. Uh, that didn't go over so well. But besides those connections there, these politicians in, their, in the blackmail campaign, some of them didn't have to be blackmailed. I don't think the Bush family had to be blackmailed. They were already working with the Chinese. And of course, the Chinese are working with the elite Israelis. Uh, as I was told uh, a little over a year ago, you guys already know this. I was told to stop speaking against China, that they would be the next world superpower, and um, that uh, they were going to drop the U.S. and go with China. Uh, well, there's not a lot of good things that I like about Trump, uh, but I will say one thing. Uh, as, you, as I have this article up here, right here on uh, Business Insider, uh, the title of it, with a wary eye on Russia, the U.S. Navy is bringing back its Atlantic fleet. That's not exactly why we brought back the Atlantic fleet. And I know I'm jumping around a little bit here, but uh, I want to kind of share some things with you. If you recall, and let me see if I can pull this up real quick on YouTube for you. Um, if I can pull up the actual video there. By the way, this is our other channel, Stephen Benoon, and... Uh, but we're going to switch channels here in just a second. Or actually, I'll just go to it. Israeli News Live. Um, and I am loading some videos there. Not, not a whole lot as of yet, as you can see, but use that as a backup channel. But I'm trying to see somewhere I brought up. Um, let's see. Where... I mentioned to you guys that there was a Chinese naval movement. And I guess if I'm not on the channel, I can't really get in there. I'm just, let's see. Okay, upload, display all. Um, oh, well. Oh, there, there we go, videos. And I had, I had said that. Let me see. I'm, I need to go back. I think it's about three weeks ago is when this actually happened. Okay, not where the U.S. was preparing for war with Iran, but there was a um, yeah, here it is, right here. Chinese Navy on the move a month ago, actually. All right, I brought this out, and I was trying desperately to find out because I was given the information that the Chinese military, their or their navy, in fact, had made a move. Uh, aggressive move against the U.S. military. and But unfortunately, I couldn't get a meeting secured where I could find out more information about what was going on. So uh, now I know what it was. And the Chinese Navy had came across the Atlantic Ocean and they were coming up to our waters, from international waters, coming into U.S. territorial waters. And President Trump actually was very quick in responding. And this is when the president of the United States actually took and moved uh, a U.S. 
naval fleet to go and challenge the Chinese before they actually entered into U.S. territorial waters. This is something China doesn't do. They normally never operate in the Atlantic. Uh, there, of course, there's been threats that they're going to do this, especially as much as we always are, are kind of uh, pushing the button down there in the South China Sea with them. But the president did send an entire war fleet there to the Atlantic. So, no, it's not Russia that is the problem. That's the smoke and mirrors for you. That's why we see this in here, just like you have on military.com. Navy brings back uh, U.S. Atlantic fleet as Russia threat intensifies. Russia, as I was told today, is just the, uh, and it has been for quite some time, it's only just been smoke and mirrors. The real threat has been China. But don't forget the connection that Israel and China have. Very close relationships there. That's something we got to keep in mind. Uh, you know, we see China building the port there in Haifa. They're also going to build the port in Ashkelon. They're also dictating how the U.S. military is going to be able to uh, to, will be able to come into port. Nothing like what you would normally think about. And as I was told today, we are basically surrounded by China. And the noose is around the neck of the United States. Uh, it has been confirmed, yes, we do have Chinese troops in Canada. We do have Chinese troops uh, south of the border, but not the, the, that is the one weak area. And I need to bring that out. Now, I know that uh, Steve Quell, when I talked to him today, he feels a little different on that issue there. And for me, it's not the, I'm not disagreeing with uh, Steve Quell on this issue either. I'm just sharing with you the different intel sources that I get on this. But uh, the source that I have out of the Pentagon believes that China is not, not really ready for that all-out invasion but that they are testing to see how we will respond. And yes, we have been in clashes militarily with China. That all has been confirmed. So what Steve Quell has said publicly is accurate. Um, another intel source that I have as well confirms these same things as well, and that the Canadian military has not been cooperative with the Chinese uh, and their incursions against the U.S. Uh, that's going on. So the point that we're dealing with right now, though, is has a lot to do with, too, with the presidential election. And is Trump going to stay in power or will Biden take over? Uh, if Biden takes over, we are going to see a much more rapid collapse in this nation. Uh as far as that, the one thing Trump will do, although I don't appreciate his involvement with Pfizer and Warp Speed and also his financial investment in these companies, knowing what this will mean for the American people. But uh, but one thing he will do, he does seem to be willing to stand up against the Chinese to protect the United States from this type of invasion. However, on the flip side of this, when I saw Texas speaking about seceding from the Union uh, and other states talking about following with them in the event that Trump is not placed back in office. They're, or, you know, they're very upset over the fraudulent election issue. Uh, I had no clue that this could actually be part of the Chinese effort itself. Uh, I have shared with you before how that they're talking about breaking the nation up into five regions and it would be ran by super governors. And of course, the president, there would still be a presidential election stuff, but it'd be more like a you know a CEO head or something of, of the five regions uh, that would be governed by super governors. So as I as we discuss that issue as well, that, that you know that that is going to happen. And I was told that, yes, China is going to acquire the United States. Uh, we are bankrupt. They got to take it militarily, and um, that they have weaselled their way in through American politicians. And of course, as I mentioned to you, one of those ways they did it was through blackmail uh, of these politicians that were involved in all the money laundering that was going on. Which, by the way, um, Georgia's governor, I haven't been able to pull the research together as of yet, but I think uh, there is a strong 
strong hint because I did ask about him specifically when I saw how he went against uh, Trump in this election campaign issue. I had a feeling he may be connected to uh, maybe Georgia Pacific or something like that. That was a big drug money laundering uh, scheme going on as well. So if any of you happen to know that, send me a tweet on Twitter there. Let me know what your thoughts are on that. Um, another one of these politicians bought out. Well, here's the funny thing. We also got to discussing um, the involvement, as it says here on National File, Chinese Communist Party members employed at Boeing, AH, AH, HSBC, Airbus, Pfizer, and AstraZeneca, and more. Uh, we're talking about 2 million Chinese Communist Party members that contain many hundreds of thousands of names of individuals who live and work in the West, including a top defense contractor, medical research and supply companies, financial institutions, and other critical roles throughout the United Kingdom and the United States and Australia. This news has been breaking out today, and oddly enough, uh, this morning we were discussing, too, China's unique ability of infiltrating uh, this country over the years, and uh, including the fact that the Chinese would take and approach CEOs of big companies and offer them up to a million dollars per Chinese uh, person that they would employ in their company, but they would have to do it for a minimum of three years. And so there were a lot of companies that took that basically, even though it was considered a legitimate uh, business proposition, uh, it still was very interesting how they did it. And said many of the people ended up being uh, spies, uh, double agents, and even uh, triple agents, uh, you know, and their undermining of our nation. So it's not just the fact that we're on the verge of being invaded by the Chinese troops, which they say that will happen. It was supposedly, as I mentioned to you before, it was supposed to happen in 2024, but it looks like we're already beginning to ramp up this fight with them even now. Uh, we're going to try to get Steve Quell to come on. Uh, I talked to Steve about that. He is, he, I think Steve will definitely come on with us there. We just have to set up a time to also share some of the intel from his side of things. But um, we're in a very serious situation, friends, very serious situation when it comes to China. Uh, the Chinese, though, as I was told today, though, the Chinese are very concerned because America is heavily armed and they know that they would take a, a lot of casualties and they're wanting this nation for its natural resources as well. Uh, and they don't want to use nuclear weapons on this nation in doing so. Uh, however, another source has mentioned that uh, we're probably going to be hit limited with, by limited nuclear strike. And, uh, and then I get another phone call from a good friend of mine, uh, Johnny, uh, saying that a good friend of his, Marine buddy of his, actually was speaking about when they talk about dark winter, it's going to be because of power outages. Uh, that we need to be prepared for that. So a lot of things are going on, and I wanted to kind of just speak a little bit about this. There's a lot more information I'm going to speak to you about as well. Um, that's another article there on the Daily Mail also speaking about that, that very same thing. Leaked files expose mass infiltration of UK firms by Chinese Communist Party, including AstraZeneca, uh, Rolls-Royce, HSBC, Jaguar, and Land Rover. Uh, so... Uh, we're in for a very serious time, friends. Um, and of course, this article, I brought this article up here, 650 warships and counting. Here's how large China's Navy is. Uh, China actually surpasses us in the number of warships they have. Now, we do have, still have a more formidable aircraft carrier fleet. China's just getting started on that. I think they're doing their third ship, or either they already have three aircraft carriers. But oddly enough, though, Russia has turned down China and uh, selling them the unique alloy for aircraft carriers that China desperately needs. Uh, does a couple of things, keeps the, keeps the uh, ships from rusting, corroding as, as quickly as other ships, uh, especially, and, and, and it's a much stronger type of technique, but they've not been willing to give that to the Chinese as of yet. But China is preparing for their role as the world's new superpower. And uh, so I guess we'll see them more and more carrying out the bidding of certain country there in the Middle East, which I won't call the name of that country as of right now. Um, at any rate, 
I want to just kind of give you some of these things here. I am going to be sharing some more information with you. Uh, and that information we may not be able to share here on Israeli News Live like I'm doing this broadcast here. And please understand, those of you that are just getting the link, I know we're, many of you are complaining, you're having trouble, you can't play the video, things like that, if it's over on iConnectFX. Uh, the team at I, iConnectFX have been monitoring your comments here so that they can make the adjustments. Uh, I did find out today that a lot of the problems normally happen because of Apple products is one of the sources that do not play back very well. They found out that it's going to take a plug-in to be able to fix that problem. They said YouTube had also uh, did something similar to that uh, quite a while back, but they're trying to, to uh, facilitate all the questions and all the issues you have. They also noticed that there were a lot of people in Australia that were having trouble doing playbacks, which they figured out what the problem was there. It's just that uh, they needed servers in other countries. They weren't anticipating this at first, uh, but they are also acquiring servers in countries all over the world so that uh, wherever you may be at in the world, you will be able to, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll allow you to be able to uh, pick up a server in your country, wherever you're close to, that allows you to be able to listen in. Uh, and by the way, you do not have to be a, you don't have to be a member of iConnect to be able to see the videos. Uh, it just helps if you are a member of iConnect. Uh, and of course you can actually subscribe to our channel as well. Uh, and, uh, but you don't have to be. And I wasn't sure about that, but that is true. You don't have to be. And those of you on Patreon as well, that's another issue that we're trying to resolve because we have to be able to have, find a way to upload the content for you because Patreon doesn't allow direct uploads. And we have already lost two channels. Uh, we lost my wife's channel, Rise Up Children of God. We've lost our Vimeo channel, which was our, our source for loading up Patreon videos. And... Um, now we've got two strikes on Israeli News Live. We've, uh, we've got one strike on Fact News Network because of loading up this content. And so it's very risky uh, in doing so. Uh, so we're trying to find ways to make sure you can see it. And you need to keep in mind, too, Brand New Tube is also another way, uh, our channel right there, that you're able to see these. Uh, videos as well, but I haven't been able to figure out how to make brand new tube link to Patreon. Uh, if I could, I know a lot more people are able to use brand new tube with, I guess, with a little bit less issues. But I think if we're a little bit patient with iConnect FX, they said in a couple of weeks they should have the latest issues resolved. Uh, you'd be able to log in there. So we have about 11, we have, we have a little bit over 11,000 subscribers on brand new tube. And so we're always loading simultaneously as many places as we possibly can. And iConnect FX, uh, it is a simple platform. Uh, I like the platform personally myself, but, uh, um, you know, like I said, they're trying to get the issues resolved for you. And uh, so, and, and if you are having trouble like us with your YouTube account, they've made it to where not only can you load up to your YouTube account with a 30 second clip, but you can actually load up the multiple YouTube accounts at one time if you so desire. Uh, so they're, they're working on everything they can to make this a better experience for everybody. Uh, and so we're, we're, we're really, uh, we, we appreciate the work they've done. And a lot of people are seeing the videos. They're not having a problem. Uh, but like I said, they monitor very closely. And that's what I appreciate about them. They actually come to our channel, monitor your comments, because they want you to have the very best experience you possibly can have. Uh, so... Just bear with us. Have a little patience. Don't forget to our new address, uh, which you should be able to see right above the top of your screen there as you're watching this here in uh, uh, P.O. Box uh, 156, Sunbright, Tennessee. And, uh, of course, that's 37872 is the zip code. So if you're wanting to support the ministry by mail, that is our new address. So we thank you for your love and kindness, and God bless you. And, 